the thing that's really interesting thing about Santa is about how the service is synchronized. In the, for any normal web service, you have many different people doing uh, a vast number of different things that aren't synchronized at all, and so they tend to average out. Um, with Santa Tracker, it's unusual in that you have you know, millions and millions of users doing exactly the same thing. So as one user spikes or put it, puts in an expensive request, you've got several million others doing, ex doing the same thing at exactly the same time. Um, so for those who don't know it, uh, this is what it basically looks like. It allows children to follow Santa as he flies around the world, uh, either if you're young or just young at heart. And we have two versions to it. Uh, one uses the Google Earth plugin, as you see just there, with animated Santa flying around, and then the second version uh, using Google Maps um, for those platforms or devices that don't support the plugin. And uh, as you can see, is Santa has got his work cut out for him to sell as well. He delivers about two billion uh, presents over the course of 24 hours and about 800 million cookies. Yeah, well, that's what he's eating. So that was a 1.6 million QPS. Um, the main takeaways from the talk, actually, that I thought would be useful to summarize um, was that for a synchronized activity, you can expect to have uh, some spiky behavior. And so it's really understanding that and spreading the load that is the essential thing that we've done over several years to make it more reliable and easier to manage. And so uh, originally we had problems where the, uh, the spikes were much larger than we anticipated and they weren't spread enough. Um, the other thing, of course, cache everything. Uh, the third thing, unfortunately we've got this, is kind of an escape valve. It's very hard to estimate QPS for an event that happens once per year. Um, so you need to make sure that you have some escape mechanism so if traffic is higher than expected, that you can uh, deal with it via other means. And then the last one is to check data because any mistake that you make is magnified by the large audience that you have. Um, so the, for the Earth client, what happens is that it jitters where the user is looking um, plus or minus two minutes. So that basically, uh, when you load the uh, when you load the Earth plugin version multiple times, Santa will be slightly ahead or behind of the Maps version. Um, but this means that the that any spike is spread over a much larger period. Where this most commonly occurs is when you transition from ocean to land. When you're going over ocean, the QPS is relatively small. When you transition to land it becomes much higher. So we need to make sure that that happens gradually rather than all in one go. And the, the other thing is that you've got to find every single case where some spiky behavior occurs. Um, occasionally we've missed issues in the past and uh, it's always come back to bite us. Um, so talking about caching everything, the original design for this when I first joined four years ago had actually dynamic server-side code in it. And so depending on the time, it would serve a slightly different file. And that meant that it was quite difficult to develop, deploy, and test this because you have to make a um, uh, sort of like code change for any code change and push a binary to do that. Um, and also it meant that if you had any issues, it was difficult to adapt it uh, uh, in real time. So over the, over the last several years, basically it got to the point Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so steadily over the years, we've replaced all of that dynamic server-side behavior so that now the service runs completely on static files. There is no... Um, code run server-side at all. And essentially, basically, you're pushing the complexity into the browser using JavaScript and the plugin, which allows you to have a very rich experience, but to be a fairly um, 
a much simpler architecture to allow this higher QPS. And it's much easier to test and deploy this. And it's also much easier to cache it as well, um, because you can use edge caching from GFE, and you can, or um, in ISPs or elsewhere in the stack. Um, this is an example of where you, what happens when you don't cache something. Um, this was something where we actually set the cache control headers incorrectly for a, um, a flash file that used to be in the site years ago. And the initial spike that you see just here is when the client, uh, when it reaches midnight, it will refresh the page and start loading the um, functionality which tracks Santa. And so there's a big spike at that point. That is somewhat to be expected. Um, and we've done things in the future where we just say, don't refresh immediately, but just refresh over a random 30 second interval. But what happened afterwards was that this Swift file, because the caching wasn't set incorrectly, it was periodically refreshing every five minutes. And then as soon as you fix the caching, it dies away to something that's perfectly normal. And fortunately, this was you know, uh, done using a static, service, static uh, content service, which means that it can handle a fairly high QPS. And so this didn't end up causing an issue, but it's the kind of thing that we have to guard against. Um, so one of the questions is, though, is how does the root get updated in real time? Um, if you imagine that, of course, we don't actually know exactly where Santa is going to be. And so you know, in collaboration we, with NORAD, we uh, get updates and then show that to the audience. Um, but there's via a mysterious mechanism we don't quite understand. Santa is able to update these static files for us. Uh, we haven't figured out yet how he's doing this. Um, there is some questions about you know whether he's doing it an, um, in a uh, sort of like a, um, a sort of a good manner or if he's a black hat Santa. Um, but you know, based on our working relationship, that we feel like we can trust him, and that it's worked it's worked out very well in the past. And so these files are up, updated mysteriously, and then it's used to drive the experience that people see in the browser. Um, but what this means is that it's very easy to control the experience and. You know, updating it or making changes only requires a data push, and there's no, the only code in there is JavaScript, which again you can push by updating a file. Yeah. So the the other big issue with something like this is about how to manage the QPS um, because it is so extraordinarily high. And one of the problems is that when you have an event that only happens once a year, it's very difficult to predict what the load will be because you don't have the sort of like uh, monotonically increasing month to month growth. And so at the same time, I was very interested in being able to say to marketing that you should feel free to push it as much as you like. And us being able to guarantee that we can handle the capacity, whatever it may be. Um, so it, although we actually work on, uh, sorry, although we work on uh, estimating this as much as possible, what we also do is to have a number of escape valves in there. And so that if the QPS ever became too high, we can limit it down to an acceptable level. And all of these you know, have to operate very quickly. Um, you know, there's two of them so that if one fails, the other can still be used. And the primary thing that we have for this is something that allows us to limit the, um, or change the altitude that Santa runs at. So that when Santa is flying, depending on the altitude he flies at, the QPS per user will vary. Now, if I just, uh, uh, so the mechanism by which it works is that there's a JSON file um, on a static content service, and that every 30 seconds that that is then fetched uh, client side, 
and if there's any change, it then applies it within the browser. Um, two important things with that is that you have to put a random offset, a, a random um, uh, sort of like suffix on the URL to make sure that you bust any caches because you absolutely cannot tolerate this being cached at all. And then the other thing is to make sure that you want to smoothly interpolate the behavior. So I'll just give you an example of this right now. If we uh, bring out Santa here, so this is going to load the local version. This is going to take a moment to get up. And as you can see, Santa is coming up to Nev Everest up here. And so this is the control file on the left. And so basically, by changing that value and then saving it, what will happen is that eventually, I'm just showing it in Firebug here, eventually it will reload that file and then smoothly interpolates the altitude, uh, raising it upwards. And when, as Santa sort of like uh, increases altitude, the, the, the speed at which he's traveling over the ground stays the same. But because it's done at a higher altitude, the Earth is more distant, and it ends up loading far less data. And uh, there's always a moment of anticipation of, like, will it actually work? But there we go. All right. So, so you can see Santa is now flying. Earth is still moving, but the Earth is now moving much more slowly. And so at any given moment, we can you know, trade off the QPS and user experience to make it, uh, to make it sort of like uh, possible for backends to handle it. And what this means is it's kind of unusual that you can do something like this. You know, imagine if, S I'm not sure how many SREs are in the audience, but if you at any given moment could just reduce the QPS of a service just so you can fix some issue, um, it would be wonderful to have it. And this is the only service I know of that can do something like this. Okay, I'll just quit that out. Uh. And get back to the talk. Uh. Um, so this is kind of this. Well, no, this is kind of, but this is the kind of route that uh, Santa will take as he goes around the world. You can see that he starts in Russia, uh, goes, tends to go in north-south routes, following different time zones, and obviously visits an enormous number of stops. And uh, you know, this is this is the route that he just took uh, back. Uh, only a few weeks ago. Um, but the the important thing about checking the... Oh, I'll show you that in a moment. But the important thing about checking the data is... I'll give you an example of one of the years that I got it wrong. In fact, it was the first year I was working on it. And uh, so, you know, in cooperation with, uh, you know, Santa, we wanted to cover a lot more cities, so we got more data, and Santa was very cooperative on this. And that when I was entering some of the city names, I made a mistake with one of them. Okay, Now, you have to imagine the situation. This is the story that was told to me. Uh, in the headquarters of Santa Tracking Operations is at NORAD in Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado Springs. And so what happens is that on Christmas Eve, they have about 1,200 volunteers come in and answer phone calls all day, uh, telling little kids where Santa is. And I've been there, answered a few phone calls. Uh, the kids are so cute, so sweet. They, they, they're very, very shy, but it's wonderful talking with them. And they show the Santa, or the Santa tracker on big screens at the end of the room. So there was this point where these two generals were talking. There's one general from the United States and the second general from Canada. And the US general looked around at the screen and he saw this. Okay? You notice at the bottom left hand corner where it says Toronto, United States. <laughs> and so the US general saw this and they thought, well, 
let's try and do our best to avoid a diplomatic incident here, because uh, Canada and the U.S. actually collaborate on tracking Santa. And so what he did was he just kept the Canadian general's attention for like that two-minute stretch until he moved on to the next city and it was all fine again. Um, but you look back at something like this and it was always a concern that you could make a mistake like this. So the list was checked not just, I mean, I not only worked on the list of the cities, but I had two other people independently check it as well. And unfortunately that we corrected some mistakes in it, but we didn't catch this one. And so on the day of the event, I was looking through all of the emails to send personal replies to everyone um, apologizing for the error, you know, explaining what happened and promising that we will not invade Canada ever again. Um, and so fortunately we have a, a fair amount of goodwill for the service, so it, uh, it, didn't, uh, it didn't escalate to a diplomatic, in, diplomatic incident. Um, the other things that um, are notable about Google actually uh, is interesting to share is that one of the reasons that we can do this is that during Christmas time, there's a global trough of traffic. I mean, this happens not just with us, but just about any other internet company. And so it means that we have extra capacity for handling something like Santa. And the, the teams involved are also, I mean, there's a lot of people have shown a lot of generosity in making all of this happen. I mean, we have people working on this in Mountain View, um, San Francisco, Zurich, uh, Sydney, and uh, Boulder, uh, Boulder, Colorado. And it's, it's the sort of like uh, camaraderie and generosity that makes all of this possible. Um, you know, it's a lot to ask somebody to say that, you know, I need you to volunteer for something. This is not your job. Um, and we're going to do something that's technically very demanding. And you're going to be on call on Christmas Eve. You're probably going to have to be online on Christmas Eve to watch it all and make sure it works out. But we, um, I feel very grateful to everyone for committing to help out with that. And uh, it's been a, a wonderful, wonderful experience to have. OK. And so that that despite what you might do, there's always going to be some surprise. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones that happened a number of years ago. Um, so paraphrasing this, it says, good evening and Merry Christmas. I'm an immigration officer and customs officer in Los Angeles, California, working on Christmas Eve. And it goes on and it says, where does Santa report his entry and his declare his merchandise? Does he have special visa that allows him not to present himself and a waiver to present the merchandise uh, for inspection? Uh, we were just wondering. And this is a customs border patrol officer. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, it's now, I think, three years later, and, uh, and uh, we, we haven't drafted a response yet. Uh, and, and fortunately, the issue seems to have been dropped. Okay. And so for, for that part, I, I wanted to open it up to questions, and then I'll have some more stuff afterwards. All right. Hello? Yes. Are you serving it only from the US or from Yes, yeah, so the serving happens worldwide. Um, and, you know, like many Google services, it's just um, distributed. It's distributed geographically so that you can get uh, a better latency depending on where the, the user is. Um, the other big thing about it is that most of the load of this is borne by the edge caches of Google. And so that, you know, your edge cache can serve data from almost anywhere. And it only has to make a limited number of requests back to the uh, uh, Google Earth backends to actually fetch the data. Um, so it basically needs to manage about, I mean, clients often have like 10 queries per second, and they have to manage that over, uh, you know, four, uh, 
over you know four minutes. So there's like two two and a half thousand URLs, um, which is constantly shifting, and so it's actually a very small amount of data to do that. All right, okay. So the question was about the jitter is uh, plus minus two minutes now and how much narrow we can make it. Um, we do get feedback from people talking about how they notice that the Earth, Earth plugin doesn't quite match up with the maps uh, version. And that one of the things is that as over the years as we've pushed more and more push to use the edge caching more and more, it means that we can handle uh, more QPS and spikier behavior. So as we reduce the jitter, it would become more spiky. And that the answer is that we'll probably re start reducing it as of next year. Um, but that's going to be a question for the new tech lead who's working on it. Yes. That, would be, that would be a talk. Thank you. All right. Yes.